try to draw a diagram for light rays that have been focused by a far-sighted eye. So this is the lens of the eye. What do we call the back part of the eye? The retina. Yeah. Uh, last time when we were going over this, I encouraged you to draw kind of a flat retina, like mm -hmm. a rectangle. Um, I think that's a good way to learn it. But if this was a test question, it might be safer to draw it like this. All right. So if, uh, if they want to test your biology knowledge, uh, you may have heard that the eye is not rectangular. Okay. So. All right. So the key thing is. We saw, what does farsighted mean? Well, we saw that there's two interpretations. One interpretation is that a farsighted eye is an eye that uh, uh, focuses the light too far from the lens. One interpretation of the word farsighted, which is correct, is it focuses the light too far from the lens. We know the image is where the light rays converge. So here's the image where the light rays converge. So this is what you drew. This is a far-sighted eye. Um, the image is too far from the lens. Because where do we want the image? Um, right on the retina. Yeah. The image is supposed to be on the retina. So how, how could this person tell that they were far-sighted here? What, what would the image look like? Um, because they won't be able to see things close up to them. Yeah. In, 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 how, in what way won't they be able to see them? They'll be fuzzy, basically. Right. I just wanted to review. This means they'll be out of focus. All right. They'll still see light, but they won't see a clear outline. OK. What we want is for the light rays to converge on the retina over here. So that's one meaning of farsighted. And you were remembering the other reason. Farsighted means you're good at seeing far things, so you're bad at seeing near things. You already knew that last time. OK. Let's go into more detail about how eyes work.
they're, they're popular on exams. Okay. So what I wanted to consider here was uh, two different objects. So here's a close object, a near object, a close object. And here's a far object. All right. Um, and uh, so we focus first on what does it take to see this close object? What does it take to see this close object? Well, here's the incoming light rays from the close object. And you can see when the light rays get to the lens that they get bent a little bit. I bent them a little. Uh, why do they have to bend? Because otherwise they wouldn't converge on the retina. The light rays have to converge on the retina. So this is an eye that's working properly. Um, so that it can see, so it has a good uh, uh, image of the, the close-up object. But now let's think about the far object. Now I drew these light rays coming in at the same angle as these. This light ray is coming in at the same angle as this one. But are these light rays going to have to converge more quickly or more slowly to also end up at this point? Do we need more convergence or less convergence for these uh, from the lens? Less. Less, because they've already converged so much. They've already converged so much outside of the eye that they don't need to converge too much inside of the eye. The more the rays, more time the rays have had to converge outside of the eye, the less work the lens has to do to converge them inside of the eye. That's a, a good slogan. Uh, the more time, the more distance that the rays have had to converge outside of the eye, the less work the eye is going to have to do to make them converge inside of the eye. This object is so close that the rays have had hardly any time to converge, so the eye has to do almost all the work. Whereas here, they're already pretty close to each other, so they're not going to have to converge nearly as much to still end up at this point over here. The diagram is kind of messy because now have so many rays, but hopefully this is clear what I'm doing here. Okay. So, do we decide that a close object needs more converging power from the lens or less converging power? Uh, more. We should just know that the lens of the eye is a converging lens. We've always drawn it like a convex converging lens. So the lens of the eye is a converging lens but it can be more converging or less converging. So there's, we need a uh, more converging lens here. So we need uh, a close object needs more converging power, um, which need uh, from the lens. Now, a lens can be either pretty flat or pretty round. Which of these do you think has more convergent power? Um, the top one. The flat one? Yeah. Uh, it turns out actually it's actually the round one. Maybe it would help if we did a mirror. A mirror can be kind of flat or kind of round. Mm -hmm. Well, if it was flat, if it's round, do you see how the light rays converge pretty strongly? where if it's flat, they don't converge as much. After all, what if we actually had a purely flat mirror? If it was purely flat, they wouldn't converge at all, right? Maybe the limiting case is the most helpful. If it was purely flat, they would bounce off in the same direction they came in, and they wouldn't converge at all. So maybe that's the best way to think about it. A purely flat wouldn't have any convergence at all. So the rounder it gets, the more convergence there is. A flat device, and this is true for either lenses or mirrors, although obviously in the eye we're focusing on a lens. But a flat lens or mirror would not have any converging power. The, lens, the, the, the rays would just bounce off in the same direction they came in. Um, so the closer you are to being flat, the less convergence there is. And the, the more round you are, the more convergence there is. All right, so let's go back here. We have a close object that needs more converging power. So do we need a flat lens or a round lens? Uh, round. So we need a, a rounder lens or a more curved lens, more curved. We know that if it was flat, there wouldn't be any convergence at all. So we have to get as far away from flat here as possible. So we need a rounder lens. By the way, does that, uh, no, that will stick with that. So we need a rounder lens. All right, so notice here, something that you might wonder is, how is the eye able to see both the close object and the far object? 
If the close object focuses on the retina, how could the far object also focus on the retina? After all, we know from using this equation that if you change the object distance, you change the image distance, right? It seems like any time you change the object distance, the image should be in a different place too. So how can all the images be in the same place? How can all the Im images be in the same place for different objects? It seems like the eye should only be able to see things at one distance. Well, how did evolution deal with this? It changes the shape of the lens. It keeps changing the shape of the lens to adjust to the object distance. That's the reason we can see things at different distances. You know, like if you're working with a, uh, a kind of old-fashioned camera, at first the camera is out of focus because the lens is not, uh, is not the right shape to um, uh, form a focused object and you have to adjust it. Well, the eye does the same thing with its lens. It adjusts. Okay, so there's muscles in the eye that can either tighten or relax. And those muscles in the eye, what are they called? Ciliary muscles? Do you remember that from the book? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, ciliary muscles. Okay. 